we had this dog named Zeus, okay? A big rock roller. <laughs> my brother would make me put my equipment on. And every time I would put my equipment on, put my helmet on, Zeus would go crazy. I would just take him over in the field with the dog. The dog always wanted to hang out, but I would give LaShawn the ball and would just say, go. And then Shady would take off and he would start running and I would just let the rock while go. So Zeus was very aggressive though. And I'd be terrified. <laughs> he would tackle LaShawn, he would, he would bite at his pads and it would always end up with LaShawn crying. The story gets mixed up because people feel as though maybe I was trying to make him a better player. That wasn't what it was about. It was just an older brother laughing, like I wanted to have a good time. Harrisburg is a, uh, it's a small city. My mom and dad, they're, they're from New York. They moved to Harrisburg to kind of get a slower pace uh, type of lifestyle. LaShawn has um, the personality, smiling one minute. The next minute, he's very, very quiet. The next thing you know, he's like angry, he doesn't want to talk to anybody, or he's ignoring your calls for a couple of days, you know, so that's just him. He's a, uh, Shady is a good uh, name from a good adjective. I never called him that. I'm just saying you're a shady person. <laughs> the biggest role model to me was my older brother. He always says like his older brother, that's, that was like his idol. At the time when they were younger, I didn't realize it. I thought they couldn't stand each other. I was a teenager, so I became like, you know, I thought I was an adult. And then he was like my brat little brother. And so there was a lot of times where I didn't want to be around LaShawn or have to babysit him or take him to the park with me. I always want to follow him. And he would be so angry. Man, stop following me. Go with your friends. Whatever I bought one kid, I bought the other. So if you had a basketball, one had a basketball, so did the other. But my oldest son lost everything. And LaShawn, he always would keep his things. Let's work it out. Let's, get, let's, make, let's make a deal. You can have my ball and I'll come and I'll play. We all played tackle. And even though he was five years younger, he had to play too. So there was a lot of days he cried. He didn't want to play anymore, but you know, he stuck with it. They bullied him, they pushed him down. I think it just made him tougher. By the time he was like 10 or 11, he had become well known throughout Harrisburg for being uh, such a great player at a young age to where the high school coaches used to ask, you know, ask me about, hey, where's your brother thinking about going to school? Is he gonna go to Harrisburg High or is he gonna come to McDevitt? There are two very strongly competing high schools, the public school, Harrisburg High School, and the uh, Catholic school, Bishop McDevitt. The best way to describe that rivalry is there are two dogs trotting down the alley, and there's only one bone. As a freshman, LaShawn was, you know, did a little talking in the weight room, and the older guys didn't like it. The first time, you know, we went contact, uh, we put him in in a goal line package, and they were just waiting for him, and and he made about a nine yard touchdown run and, and made three or four guys miss. And I think he got the respect of all the older guys then. In high school, I was probably maybe two, three pounds lighter than I am right now as a professional. So I always had like the edge on the guys my age because I was always bigger. I was always better too. Well, I think LaShawn built a lot of confidence as a young kid because he could compete with the older kids. And LaShawn had swagger. His uh, original intent was he wanted to be the next Allen Iverson. And uh, it didn't happen in basketball, but it sure did happen in football for LaShawn. Well, one of the good things about being in the NFL, you're able to show your family a different side of things. Um, when I was able to go to Arizona and have a little bit of success and have some nice things, they came out to my house and LaShawn was just amazed at everything. Everything that his brother did, he wanted to do. And he looked around and he was in high school and he said, Mom, this is what I want. All of this is what I want. I'm gonna get it. My, my senior, I got about 78 scholarships. He was at the time the number one recruit in the country, uh, all positions, and uh, very well positioned to go wherever he really wanted to go. And the fourth game of the year was a big rivalry game. Very typical to a, a Harrisburg McDevitt game, uh, you can throw the records out, and this was about. Uh, pride on Market Street where both the schools are located. We were about to put the game away when uh, LaShawn ran a, uh, 
a play up the middle and we all saw him go down and uh, we weren't quite sure what was happening because LaShawn always got up and this time he didn't get up. You know, I come outside and the guy comes from behind and tackles me and breaks my ankle. And in that moment, I just thought that uh, I mean, everything was done. The dreams I had, um, the things I wanted to do for my, my family, the way we live, the type of life I wanted to give them. I flashed a second, you know, all them things feel like you can't even reach it no more. And, uh, and that was it. We were playing out in um, Altoona, and I remember looking over on the sidelines, seeing LaShawn wrapped up in a blanket and had big alligator tears coming down his face because he knew had he been there, he would have made a difference for us. I didn't want to go to school. I was embarrassed. I, I, I was so selfish at the time. I was young. I started taking my official visits while my team was still playing. So if I had a game Friday night, I wasn't going. I was going on my, my official visit, which no player does that. I was just so hurt. The team was still winning. I felt like my identity was gone. I think even his team having so much success without him was, was scary for him too. He wasn't really sure of who he was at that time. I think he had to go through a process where he really wanted to find out you know, who he was. Coach Wanstead, one of my favorite coaches, he knew me from high school and he wanted me. In my mind, I'm like, ah, you know, coach, you know, I'm gonna compete for a national championship every year. Like, you, I might not be the guy you can recruit. Fast forward a little bit, I went from all them scholarships to about three. And I kind of needed them. And he said, uh, you know, I'll give you a chance to regain your name. I'll give you a chance to, you know, one day be the star that you once was. He gets down to pit and he loves it and he signs that weekend. And piece by piece, you know, once he went on his visit to Pittsburgh and he accepted it, I feel like he finally got to be back to his old self. From there, I mean, you know, you see what happened. <laughs> uh, Paul Kreider, you know, guy, Corey Jett. Now, these are my coaches from high school. These guys would constantly send me mail, text messages, motivational type of conversations. And one thing that, that Corey Jett, you know, what he told me is this, know who you are. I'm like, what type of, what does that mean? Know who you are. I know who I am. He said, no, know who you are. And that's something to today that I always say to myself. You know, I know who I am. No matter what the writer may say or what coach thinks, I know who I am. And you can't take that away from me.